This is Reverend Fabienne Piccini. It's unusual for me to share a weekly message from my home, but these are unusual circumstances and unprecedented circumstances. And it's a blessing that we can still get together over the airwaves. A couple of months ago, I spoke about taming our thoughts and how our higher self, if we allow it, would wipe out those thoughts that are unproductive and heal us. As I was going within, so that the theme of the sermon be revealed to me, the scripture that I used came up again and again. And indeed, it is very relevant today. So I will refer to it again, or at least a portion of it. The scripture reading is taken from the New International Version of the Bible, Mark chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs, allow us to go to them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about two thousand in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. And thus concludes the scripture reading, Mark chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. When we look at the metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, the demons in this man's head represents the wrong thoughts that run rampant in his mind, controlling his behavior kind of to the extreme. And there were so many thoughts going through his mind that they called, they called it legion. With the situation that we're dealing with today, with this coronavirus, many of us might have many thoughts ravaging our mind, ravaging our consciousness. We get absorbed by all the news and then fear takes over and our appetite for news increases. And it's a vicious cycle. Have you found yourself waking up in the middle of the night, unable to sleep? And then the first thing that you do is to pick up your phone and then you go on new sites or social media to see if there's anything else that you can learn or that you can know about this coronavirus. How many people have been infected? How many people have died in our area or around the world? Even though you haven't watched TV or you haven't watched the news for many months or even years, now you're making a point to get to the news on time so that your craving for more information, for more news on this crisis can be satisfied. Is this the right approach though? As I asked for guidance, the law of attraction kept brewing in my mind. So if you're part of this ministry, you often hear about the fact that you need to pay attention to your thoughts. One of the divine principles is that thought is the beginning of creation. The more we think a thought, the more intensely we think a thought, the more we create that thought. The more we think the same thought, the more we give it energy, the more we give it life. Thought activates principle and principle activates matter. And that's how we manifest what we're thinking. So I would urge anyone with a strong appetite for news about a catastrophic event that's unfolding to put their thoughts in check. If we consider how our thoughts create our reality, how wise is it to constantly think of a doomsday scenario where many of us and our loved ones might get seriously ill 
or even lose their lives. Is that a reality that we want to create? Don't get me wrong. No, I'm not saying that we should not watch the news at all. I'm not saying that we should not inform ourselves. And I'm not saying that we should not consider the warnings, that we should ignore the warnings. It is important to wash our hands. It's important to not touch our face. And it's important to stay indoors while we're in the middle of this crisis. It's important to participate in the efforts to flatten the curve. Hashtag flatten the curve. That's a loving thing to do. We're not used to it and it's not easy. But it's an act of selflessness. It is an act of selflessness to stay indoors while we're riding this wave. But it's also an act of love to live our lives. Even if living our lives means adjusting to the current situation. It is an act of love to stay indoors and enjoy life. It is an act of love to stay indoors and enjoy the company of our loved ones. And if we live by ourselves, it is an act of love to connect with people that we care about and that care about us through the airwaves. It is an act of love to maintain social or actually physical distancing. And if we have a front or a backyard, it is an act of love to admire the beauty of the nature unfolding before our eyes. Spring has sprung, a lot of flowers are blooming. There's a lot of beauty around us. Let's focus on the beauty around us. Not only would it help us psychologically, but focusing on the beauty around us will help us create a stronger reality of beauty around us because of the law of attraction. There is another important aspect of the law of attraction that might be worth considering. And here I'm going to talk about science meeting spirituality. We've been doing social distancing for a long time, actually. It's just that we were not calling it social distancing. Technology brought social distancing to us before we had a pandemic. Okay, let me rephrase this. The way we've been using technology led us to social distancing. And we've been doing that for quite some time. We've been walking around with our noses in our cell phone. People crossing the street with a cell phone, walking the dog with a cell phone, riding an elevator in an office building with our nose down, looking at it down on our cell phone. You look at parents at the park or (laughs) at a crowded beach or at a crowded swimming pool How many of them have their full attention on their kids playing or even being in the water? How many people at restaurants are fully focused on the people that they're dining with, with or without interruption from their cell phone or without an urge to look down at their cell phone or now even better, smartwatches? I know, I've seen it too. And actually I've I've been doing that myself. Many of us have been saying that we want to work from home because we want to have more free time. And, well, we've reached that goal. But now, what are we going to do with this time? Are we going to use the law of attraction in a constructive way? Because whether we want it or not, law of attraction is always there. Are we going to glance down at our cell phone and continue practicing that social distancing with people in our household? Are we gonna spend time to reconnect with our loved ones with or without technology? In her book, The River of Life, which is the book about natural law, Marilyn Autry defines the law of attraction as something that is immutable. 
it always responds to our commands. And actually our commands to the law of attraction is how we behave. And that is because we are a spark of divinity. So, we must use this law of attraction responsibly. It's time for us to live responsibly and think of all the thoughts. And think of other thoughts than thoughts of viruses and people getting sick. Unless it's our professional responsibility to do so. If we are healthcare providers or working on crisis management teams, just to name a few. It's time for us to start using technology in a way that the law of attraction gives us what we actually want. Our, div our divine self permeates our human body and our divine self wants to connect with people because if we connect with people, we connect with the divine self of those people. We are made of love. And we thrive when we're loved. The first thing that always comes to my mind when I think about that is that when kids are not doing well, when they throw a tantrum, they respond much better to our demands or request. When what we want to say, we say it with love. When we scream, we put up a wall, nothing gets in. That's because we are made of love, so we respond to more love. Also, research has shown that the vital signs of people who are in intensive care units normalize in the company of loved ones. Even though at the beginning, when the people that they care for enters the uh, ICU, the vital signs increase is for a short time. They, they, there's a little spike, but then it normalizes. The vital signs improve after a few minutes. We need human connections. So it's time to rethink how we connect with one another. Or if we don't, why don't we want to? The universe is now giving us a wake-up call. So now we have an amazing opportunity to go on the right track, to create the life that we want, collectively. Just as it is important to not focus on the negative things that we bring into our consciousness with the law of attraction, it is important to focus on the positive things that are coming out of this. In times like these, you see the worst in people, but you also see the best in people. You see communities coming together. You see people helping each other. You see restaurants offering curbside meals for free for anyone who needs it. You see people taking care of their elderly neighbors, even though they normally don't really talk to them. So if you want to get your news from social media, focus on the good news. And if you want to share things on social media, instead of sharing the things that irritate you, share the things that make you smile. Share the things that remind you of love. Remind your friends and your loved ones of the good things. Bring out the love in people. I always like nightly news on NBC because one day I realized that they would always end the news with a feel-good story. That's what we have to remember, the feel-good st stories. As metaphysician, don't we want to make people feel good? Now let's talk about connecting with our higher self because Connecting with our higher self is actually important to bring out the best in us. So for many of us, unless we're working in healthcare or we're in charge of restocking shelves at the grocery store, 
or we have many children who are ill or relatives that we have to take care of, we have more time to connect with our higher selves now. So let's use the time that we would normally spend commuting to our work to connect with others or with our divine self. How do we do that? Well, through meditation and prayer. If you're a novice at meditation or if you feel that you cannot meditate because you always have thoughts that enter your mind and, and then you just get carried away, well, you're not alone. Remember that you are a spark of divinity. You are always a spark of divinity. So if you need help to reconnect to your spark of divinity, I will help you and I will post some brief instructions on the website and perhaps on YouTube. And we'll actually also post some meditations, some guided meditations on our website. Connecting with our divine selves through meditation will give us the tools to deal with the current situation for us and for our loved ones. Connecting with our divine selves will give us the desire and the strength to control our thoughts. The legion, like in the scripture, will go into the swine and fall into the lake once it's been touched by the Christ within us. And the lake, when you think about it, water is a symbol of purification. Once the Christ within us reaches those thoughts, they will be purified, will be better able to control them. Connecting with our divine self will give us the love and the desire to heal, heal ourselves, but also heal our community. Connecting with our divine self will lessen the frenetic desire that we have to read those gloomy news. Connecting with our divine self will bring us the desire to support each other. Connecting with our divine self will make us realize that no matter what happens, it's all good. We are love. We are loved because we're made of love. Our old reality has been turned upside down. We are creating our tomorrow based on how we're acting today, based on how we are reacting to this new situation that we're dealing with. So let's use this time productively with the help of the law of attraction to create the life and the planet that we want. Namaste.